Philadelphia from New York. This was an attempt by Washington to harass them as they were the British were moving from Philadelphia back to New York. Uh, but anyway, the British Army reached New York City in early July. Washington reached the outskirts of New York City on July 6th. Again, this is 1778. Uh, for the next three years, the Continental Army occupied several forts around New York City, which was essentially under siege. So it's similar to the situation around Boston, except the American position was not nearly as strong. Uh, nevertheless, we're not going to see tons of action. Washington would fight no major battles for the next three years, uh, nor would the British. There, there'll be some minor engagements. There'll be some raids. There'll be in, uh, uh, fights with some of the Indians. But essentially, the Northern War settles down into a stalemate where neither side really does a whole lot. So there's not going to be any more Saratogas or Trenton or Princeton or Bunker Hill or anything like that. Uh, the war is going to shift to the South. And for his conduct, we already saw at Monmouth, Charles Lee was court-martialed. <laughs> he was suspended. Let's, talk, let's just keep talking about Charles Lee. Let's beat a man while he's down, Charles Lee. He was court-martialed and suspended for a year. Okay. I thought I, I lied earlier. I said we were done with Charles Lee. Cross my fingers. I think this is the last we will really talk about Charles Lee. <laughs> well, I'll say one final thing as sort of an epilogue to his story. It's a fitting end, I guess, whatever your thoughts are on him. Uh, so he's court-martialed on charges of disobedience of disorders, misbehavior before the enemy, and disrespect to the commander-in-chief. He's found guilty. He lobbied Congress to overturn the verdict, but no one really took up his cause. And then he makes a series of written and oral attacks on Washington to try to denigrate him in the public eye and launch a media campaign. That also fails, and that alienates most of his supporters, so he doesn't have people in society that will back him up. And it caused him to be challenged to a number of duels, which... Is... Oh, yeah, the duel. We should talk about the duel. Yeah, well, if you have uh, that in mind, please, by all means, yes. Oh, well, it was... Uh... Oh, I believe. Was it John Lawrence? John or, Lawrence. Yeah. yeah. John Lawrence challenged him to a duel. This is in the Hamilton musical. They talk about, there's a song called the 10 Dual Commandments. Uh, really fun song. Yeah. Washington was not happy about that. I, I believe if Lee was wounded, not seriously, not like mortally wounded or anything, but he was wounded. Lawrence was sticking up for Washington. He was another one of these young men that Washington took onto his staff along with Lafayette and Hamilton and Lawrence didn't appreciate what Lee had to say about Washington. So he is wounded and then he licks his wounds for the rest of his life and withdraws from public life in disgrace. Yeah. Yeah. Charles Lee, he's not going to live a whole lot longer. Just kind of a sad ending, I guess, to a guy that you would have hoped had better potential, but he just had more, a lot more ambition than he had talent. He just didn't have the talent to back up all this ambition. Yeah. Had he come into the public scene, maybe a decade or two later, he might have been a good politician. Yeah, probably. So he, he's going to die in 1782. So this is before the war even officially ends. He'll be 50 years old. So, hey, I outlived Charles Lee. Yay. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. That's something to be proud of for whatever reason. All right. Well, here we go. This uh, sidetrack episode, I guess, how would you sum it up, James, for Pennsylvania that there's, I would say progress was made. The overall war aims, America hasn't secured itself a stronger position, but Pennsylvania is no longer under direct threat. The army is better trained. If this is going to be a war of attrition, then they have better fundamentals than the British. So that's how I understand. But how do you see this year that went by? I think of it as a moral victory uh, for the Americans and more than a moral victory in several ways. If you think about it, how left general Howe left new york and went to philadelphia he wanted to capture the congress or at least as, as many of the members as he could he hoped to snag people i guess like john adams and samuel adams and those people and string them up you know maybe make an example and maybe if he could do that then a lot of the other rebel leaders would see the handwriting on the wall and give up well he got to philadelphia the congress was gone he stayed in philadelphia for a while and then eventually just had to leave and go back to New York. Although, of course, it was Clinton by that time. But so really, I think the overall British objective was foiled. I mean, it, the, the overall British objective certainly wasn't, oh, let's go to Philadelphia and hang out for a year and a half or so or a year. 
a year. And then let's just go right back to New York and, and settle down into a stalemate and do nothing else at all for the rest of the war, at least in the North. Uh, so yeah, I, I think, I think the American army could be proud of itself. And, and again, we, as you mentioned, they get better. Their, their fighting ability seems to be improving gradually. They've been whipped into shape. They're really becoming a professional army. Thanks in large part to Baron von Steuben. So yeah, I think it's, uh, Things are starting to look up a little bit for the Americans, even though they didn't win a great victory in a battle like Washington had hoped to. At least they didn't lose. They didn't get crushed. They didn't get wiped out. They're still alive to fight another day, and they're stronger for it. Yeah, well, I think that's a good way to sum it up. So in the next episode, we're going to be going back into our main battles that compose this top 10 key battles of the Revolutionary War. We're going to go to Rhode Island. So we'll dive into all that in the next episode. All right. Well, that wraps up our exploration of the past for this episode. As always, I want to thank the Knowlton's Rangers, especially our spy masters, Bill Ivey, Joyce Norman, Tyler from Colorado, Josh Reddick, Baron Fraza, Chris from Maine, Carl from Norway, Moondoggy from Ohio, Rick Knowlton, Vic and Irene, Mike from New York, Michelle and Marlene. I'll explain what that is in a second. If you like the show and want to help it grow, there are four easy ways for you to do it. One, like and subscribe to the show on the podcast player of your choice. This helps spread the word about the show. Two, join our Facebook group. Here we can keep the discussion going about new episodes and you can talk about what you like and didn't like. And you can find this group if you just search for History Unplugged on Facebook. Three, we have an online store with t-shirts, phone covers, and other accessories featuring awesomely bad history puns that were crowdsourced by you, the audience. And you can find that if you go to tpublic, T-E-E, public.com and look for History Unplugged, or you just go to historyonthenet.com and look for our store there. Four, and this is really the best way to dive deep with History Unplugged, and that's to become one of the Knowlton's Rangers. If you know your American history, you know the Knowlton's Rangers were an elite spy and reconnaissance group in the American Revolutionary War, but it's also the name of the membership program of History Unplugged. You can join at three levels. If you join at the level of Scout, you can hear all the episodes of History Unplugged completely ad-free and get early access to new episodes, at least a week early. If you join at the Intelligence Officer level, you get special bonus episodes, like a 10-part series on the World War II hero Audie Murphy, a multi-part series called Ottoman Lives about different people in the Ottoman Empire, and a series called Rendezvous with Death that looks at biographical profiles of Americans who went to fight in World War I before America entered the war. The last level is Spy Master, where you get all that stuff, but you also get three hardcover history books, Forging a President, How the Wild West Created Teddy Roosevelt, Race to the Top of the World, Richard Byrd and the First Flight to the North Pole, and The Last Fighter Pilot, the true story of the final combat mission of World War II. Another bonus is you can choose a history topic for me to focus on for an entire episode that can go up to an hour, and I'll answer whatever question you have for me, and you get a shout out at the end of each episode. If you want to learn how to become a member of the Knowlton's Rangers, go to patreon.com slash unplugged. That's patreon.com slash unplugged. All right, well, that is all for my spiel. Thanks for listening to the History Unplugged podcast from ancient Greece to the Cold War and everything else in between. See you next time.